Allen Avenue, where Little Five Points collides with Emmon Park, is Recce Bar Brew Pub. Located in the basement of a century-old Victorian-style home, Wrecking Bar offers a pleasing selection of house brews, craft cocktails, wines, spirits, and whimsical interpretation of various comfort foods. Of note, Wrecking Bar was named in the top places to order a perfect Sazerac in Atlanta. And now, here's an interview with Ian Cox of Wrecking Bar, in which he talks cocktails, bartending in general, and more. Hi, this is Noriko of the Atlanta Cocktail Tour. We're here in Little Five Points at Wrecking Bar, and we're going to talk to Ian Cox. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started bartending? Absolutely. Um, it's kind of a funny story. I, I started in this business bouncing at a, a, a bar in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, to earn some extra money to go to Vegas for a bachelor party. And from there, I just kind of fell in love with the business. Was you know, I did that for a couple of years, and then. Right when I graduated, the guys who were running the bar left. And so I got moved up to bartending. Uh, I would by no means call that bartending at this time I thought I was. Now it's more drink porn, doing a lot of vodka tonics and bourbon and cokes and Jaeger bombs and soda and limes. Probably go through six bottles of soda a night. Yeah. Uh, from there, I kind of bounced around. I actually sold insurance, left the business, sold insurance for two years, and then got back into it uh, and really just kind of progressed in my style and large started studying the business a lot more. I, I went to a, a beach bar, did that for a season, went out to Colorado for two years and ran a ski resort bar. And that's where I really kind of started growing, falling in love with the classics. And then when I moved to Atlanta, uh, I really started refining my style, learning what it was to be a true bartender, to really be a barman uh, in the bar. And, uh, and the rest is just kind of grow from there. Can you tell us about some of the noteworthy accomplishments that you've had in your career? Um, let's see, I guess the biggest thing would be last year I won the uh, Beef Eater 24 National Championship, which actually also gave me the title of the USBG National Champion. So I got to go to Prague and compete at the World Cocktail Championships. Wow. And I also got to go to London and compete in the Global Beef Eater 24 Championship, where I finished uh, top 10. For this tent. So. That's quite impressive. Yeah. What would you like our viewers to know about Wrecking Bar? We do it all. Um, we're not just a beer bar. Our, our beer, yes, is award winning. Uh, Bob and Neil do amazing things with our beer. Uh, our food, Chef Terry Koval, is out of this world. What he does with the food is amazing. And our cocktail program uh, is, you know, in my opinion, one of the tops in the city, um, if not the state. It's one of the reasons that brought me here when, when I first interviewed here. I almost turned the job down because I wanted to do more contents. I didn't want to just do beer. And then it got brought to my attention that, hey, not everybody drinks beer. True. And so, um, you know, we, we do encompass every aspect of the restaurant business. You're, you can come in, get a great beer, get a great cocktail, get a great meal. Uh, if you want a whiskey, we have 100, over 175 whiskeys here. Um, you know, we, we run the gamut. Probably about 15 different gins. So, yeah, we had a lot of fun. What would you say your favorite cocktail is? Uh, one or the other would be either the Manhattan or the Sazerac. Uh, the Sazerac is truly the classic American cocktail. It predates the Revolutionary War. You know, it, it was made in New Orleans. Uh, it really just blew up and, and became this great thing for cocktail for the cocktail world. Such a simple drink, but such a complex drink. And then the Manhattan, just to me, is the basis for all great whiskey drinks. You know, uh, look at almost every, you know, craft whiskey cocktail being done today, and it's a derivative of the Manhattan or of the Sazerac. I, I, I love my consent drink about that. If you could make Anyone a cocktail, dead or alive, who would it be and what would it do? Um, dead, I mean, I, I think every craft bartender who loves classics would say Jerry Thomas. I mean, he, he's the reason we're all here. He's, he is the first celebrity craft bartender. I mean, the Prince of Wales was coming to his cocktail, coming to his bar. That's how we got one of the best brunch cocktails out there, which is the Prince of Wales, which... Um, I would probably say it would, would be the cocktail I would make for him. 
because after reading his book and vibe, that's the one that I kind of latched onto and I've honed and, and made it something of my own. And I really love making them. I have regulars that come in here and drink Prince of Wales. I like um, to have them. They're delicious. <laughs> um, alive, I honestly would probably say uh, Dave Wondrich. Um, the, the guy is amazing with what he does. Uh, he, it was his teachings and bar sparks that gave me the basis for the punch bowls that I do, okay. uh, which I, I love doing punch bowls. So I'd probably make him a a punch, maybe, maybe the, the John Daly punch I do, uh, which is a, a sweet tea lemon oleosaccharum and whiskey and, and uh, chinar and uh, some Grand Classico bitters. Uh, it's one of my favorite punches, most unique ones I make. That sounds wonderful. Uh, it's really nice. We focus on home bartending, cocktails in the kitchen. Sure. What would you say every home bartender should have in their kitchen? You know, I would say make make sure you have a good modifier. To be honest with you. Everybody's got whiskeys or gins at their home bars, but not a lot of people have a vermouth or they have, you know, a Drambuie or an Atma or an Amaro of some sort to play with. Uh, or, you know, either that or have some bitters. It's amazing what a bitters, a bottle of bitters can do to a, a cocktail you make at home. You know, you can take any whiskey and throw some bitters in there and you have a completely different drink. You know? um, other than that, you know, if you really want to get into it and do some home cooking, uh, make sure you have some good spices because you can make some great syrups very easily, you know, at home. It'll take you an hour to do, you know, and that's from start to finish. So. Do you have a favorite cocktail ingredient? Um, for example, do you have a favorite bitter that you use? <laughs> um, my bartenders would tell you if it has rye whiskey in it or if it has Angostura or orange bitters in it, I probably made it. Um, Scott Mayer, who, who's one of my mentors, uh, would also say Benedictine. Uh, I have, of all the cocktails I've made that have gone on my menu, I would say 98% of them have either rye, Benedictine, or, or uh, Angostura or Warren Bitters. Would you say you have a signature shake, and how important is your shake to a cocktail? I don't think I have a signature shake. I, I'm not one that, that it gets all very uh, artistic with it. I, I'm a big guy. I'm, you know, my, my nickname in high school was Meathead. <laughs> and so uh, I get it abo up above my head and I just shake the ever-living hell out of it. Uh, and, and um, you know, I'm not fancy with it. In fact, when I was going to Prague, I was studying all these YouTube videos and seeing the, the Japanese and the, you know, the Chinese and they have these very beautiful, flowing, artistic shakes. And I called up David Nepov and said, if this is what I have to do to win, I'm not going to win. Uh, I, I just shake it. And uh, mine, it, it, any shake is imperative to a good drink. Uh, what I've had to learn is not to overshake it because I do such a powerful shake. Because there's that concern that you will water down your cocktail very quickly that way. You've been in the industry for quite some time. What's one of the craziest things that's happened to you as a bartender or that you've encountered? Um, craziest. I got to bartend with Michael Jordan one time. That was actually a lot of fun. Um, he came to Chapel Hill, and when Michael likes to come to Chapel Hill, he likes to bartend. And by bartend, I mean he comes in and gives out beer. And he walked in and said, I was, I was like, hey, I'm Michael. I was like, uh-huh. What can I do for you? I said, I'd like to bartend. I went to my other bartender. I said, get out. Because my bar wasn't big enough for three guys, especially with one of them being Michael Jordan. And uh, he gave out a lot of beer. And uh, I got my butt whooped, pouring shots and making vodka tonics and bourbon and Cokes and, you know, Jager bombs. And uh, end of the night, believe it or not, he, uh, he tipped very, very well. Told me to keep all the tips and paid for all the beer he gave out. That was that was probably one of the most surreal, craziest things I've ever done. Other than that, I, I'd probably say just stumbling upon the competition and out of that, getting the opportunity to go to Prague and play, uh, to, to win these these competitions. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would be doing that. That's pretty awesome and, yeah. and impressive. Um, do you have any advice for anyone that's interested in getting a food beverage industry? Be patient. Be patient. Be willing to learn. Uh, and uh, 
I, I think the main thing is study if you really want to do it and you really want to do it right. Look at what these guys have done behind you know, before you. There's a reason why we're still talking about Jerry Thomas drinking the Prince of Wales cocktail. And there's a reason why Dale DeGroff and Dave Lundrich haven't been able to make a living out of, out of making drinks. You know? uh, other than that, just be patient. Be willing to put in the work. You know, the best people in this business start at the bottom and just work their way up through hard work. You know, the way I look at it is very few people are going to outwork me. And if, and if you want to be great in this business, you got to be willing to outwork it. Finish this sentence for me. A good bar has... Technique. Has... Um, has taken the time to learn the proper technique and to make the drinks right. And not just to throw anything out there and call it a Manhattan or call it an old fashioned. So. Do you have any suggestions as a bartender for a hangover cure? Uh, to me, you can't beat a Bloody Mary. Um, my dad would tell you, and I have actually done this and he's proven it to me, it works. A jalapeno pizza and a pitcher of beer. Um, wow. I woke up one morning not feeling so rough and he looked at me and said get in the car I thought I was in a lot of trouble because I was not 21 yet <laughs> and uh, he took me to a pizza joint we had a jalapeno pizza and a pitcher of beer and uh, I felt great especially after the nap I took later <laughs> so. um, are there any people that you would like to acknowledge or thank or friends oh, or family wow um, I mean yeah my first off my family has been so supportive of me uh, they I, I truly could not be where I am in this business, in this world, without my family. Um, other than that, I, you know, I'd say uh, Scott Mayer has been a, a huge, huge uh, part of my success, uh, supporting me and teaching me technique. Uh, my GM, Stevenson Rosslow, is most of what I know in this business. Um, and, and the Sandages, you know, our owners, Bob and Christine Sandage, uh, really have... have uh, they, you know, restaurant owners don't like to give away booze, and they sure don't like to see uh, see liquor get thrown down the drain as you work on multiple cocktails. Yeah. And they've been willing to sit there and look at me and be like, hey, just have fun, play, you know, but make sure you're doing it for the good of the restaurant. Yeah. And they've really allowed that to happen. It's great. That's right. Well, that concludes our interview. Um, I would be happy to have a cocktail from you. Absolutely. What's your poison? I love a good bourbon. He makes some good bourbon drinks. Let's go make a bourbon drink. Uh, so, guys, what I'm making for you today is uh, is called the Liquid Long Johns. It's actually my cocktail that I'm going to be submitting into the Diageo World Class Competition. Uh, she said bourbon. We're going to go with a little rye here, actually. And actually, where we're going to start is with uh, some Laphroaig Tenure. But we're going to do a rinse on the glass. I like to use a spritzer. Uh, I am actually a uh, beverage manager, so as a businessman, I, I hate waste. So we're going to spritz the glass uh, as well as the ice that we use to chill the glass. Um, the reason I'm actually doing this, this is a play on two different classic drinks. Uh, the first is the Sazerac, as I said, is one of my favorites. You do start with a good absinthe rinse. So instead of absinthe, I went with uh, Laphroaig. Uh, the second drink that it is is also the Rusty Nail. So I'm going to use a little Drambuie later on to give it a nice sweetness. Uh, we're going to start with a little rye whiskey here. I'm going with an ounce and a half of that. Next is that Drambuie we talked about. Uh, it's a Scotch-based cocktail, our Scotch-based liqueur. It's got a little honey in there, a little heather. Uh, not much Drambuie, a little bit goes a very long way. So, the sweetness. Uh, the next, one of my favorites, again, kind of one of those fall, winter liqueurs that I use all the time, is uh, Baron Jaeger. So, uh, not to be confused with Jaegermeister. Gives you a nice little honey flavor to it there. Uh, we play with a lot of Amar Amaros here. This is Amaro Averna. Uh, it's a nice citrusy Amaro. It's really nice, really easy to drink. Uh, I love using this. And finally, uh, as I mentioned, one of my heroes of this business, Jerry Thomas, we're going to use the bitter to Jerry Thomas bitters. Um, it's actually going to bring a nice aromatic to the drink. 
as well as, uh, believe it or not, you're going to pull a little mint out. That's really good. So, uh, one of the reasons I rinse my ice uh, is because I actually like to use that ice in the drink just to pick up a little hint of that Lafroy or in the Sazerac since the absinthe. Um, most people would tell you, you don't want to use that dirty ice uh, to mix your drink with. Uh, and typically I agree with that. But in this case, because we are, uh, because we rinsed it to get a flavor, I'm actually going to use it in the drink. Um, my bartenders typically don't like the drinks I make because they're in-depth, they're complicated. They have multiple, multiple ingredients and they're typically stirred because they're all busy. Uh, we uh, call ourselves a high volume craft bar. So we're doing nice high end cocktails, but we're doing them right and we're doing them craft. So I do mandate that they stir when they need to stir. And, you know, they're getting really good at it though. I'm really, I'm really proud of my bartenders, what they do here. Good drink needs to be balanced with a little acid. What a twist there for you. Liquid long johns for you. We have the liquid long john. I'm going to give this a try.